Well, welcome back to our next review topic. Now, it's titled Derivatives, but our main goal is to focus on the cleanup of derivatives, factoring out GCFs with negative or fractional exponents. So let's start with a real nice example. x times the square root of x squared minus 4. Okay, so if I read this out loud, it says x times the square root of x squared minus 4. So product rule has got to be screaming out at you. So I want you to pause it. All I want you to do is to take the product rule correctly, and we're going to focus on the cleanup together. So like I said, pause it, and let's just compare derivatives. So I've got a quick first derivative of the second should be 1 half, junk inside to the negative 1 half, derivative of the inside, plus in the product rule, the second times the derivative of the first. So I think everybody should be able to do that pretty easily. Now, I want you to bracket the first quantity up to the plus sign and bracket after the plus sign. There are two quantities here. There's all this junk is one term and this junk is one term. So you're strictly looking at this side and this side and asking yourself, what do they have in common? Well, I hope it's obvious that they have this x squared minus 4 in common raised to some power. Now, before we talk about which one we're going to pull out, let me give you a little example in the corner. If I said x squared minus 3x cubed, who would you pull out as the GCF? Would you pull out the x squared or the x cubed? Hopefully you're saying you'd pull out the x squared. Now let's talk about what that would leave us. Well, it doesn't leave us with nothing as the first term. It leaves us with a 1 minus, I hope you would say 3x. Now I guess my point is to stress where that x came from. I think you would agree you're taking what's up here and you're subtracting out what you factored out. So I would say 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. That leaves me with an exponent of 1 here. And that's the whole key to pulling out a GCF, is that you're subtracting the exponents. So let's do the same thing down here. You're going to pull out the x squared minus 4. And again, refer back to this example. Did you pull out the bigger one or the smaller one? Hopefully, you're pulling out the smaller one. So if I compare negative 1 half to 1 half, I'm going to pull out the x squared minus 4 to the negative 1 half. Okay, that's the GCF. Now here's the big bracket. If I take that out to the negative 1 half, and you can cross it off, that's completely gone. Well, it turns into a 1. And you're left with these three terms. If you multiply those three terms, hopefully you're saying the 1 half and the 2 are going to cancel. So you're basically left with an x squared. Okay, keep this plus sign in line. Now on this side, all right, use common sense like we did here. We took what exponent we had, and we subtracted out what we pulled out. So I have a 1 half, and I'm subtracting out, I pulled out a negative 1 half. What does that leave you with? An exponent of 1. So that means I have the quantity x squared minus 4 to the first. And I'm going to clean up one or two more steps here. I'm going to say that's x squared minus 4 to the negative 1 half. And inside, I get 2x squared minus 4. Now, if I didn't see that answer, I could now take this and move it to the bottom. So I could say I get 2x squared minus 4 all over the square root of x squared minus 4. Now, I know some of you are going to want to try to factor, but we've talked about before, this cannot get factored. Even though these are both perfect squares, you cannot simplify them with this radical here because of this minus sign. All right, so this is simplified. We are done and good to go. Example number two. The quantity 3x minus 4 squared divided by the cubed root of 2x squared minus 4. So at this point, because I said divided by, I certainly could do quotient rule. But I really try to avoid quotient rule if I can. I'm going to bring this bottom up and do product rule. So let's all do the same thing here. Let's rewrite the top, 3x minus 4 squared, okay, times, and when I bring that bottom up, I just have to make my exponent a negative. So the cubed root would mean to the 1 -third power, bringing it up as a negative 1 -third. So again, go ahead and do product rule, pause it, make sure we have it matched up before we try to clean it up. But you should be able to nail product rule, so talk yourself through it. All right, so just verify with me. I've got my first derivative of the second. I brought that exponent down, left the inside minus 3 thirds, makes that a negative 4 thirds, times the derivative of the inside, which is 4x, 
plus the second term, derivative of the first, bring the two down, keep the inside to the first, derivative of the inside. All right, so I just want you, and I think this will be more helpful if you just bracket in the first quantity up to the plus sign, bracket in the second quantity. You are looking for a GCF between this and this. And I think you'll see two of them. First, they both have this quantity, 3x minus 4. So that can come out. Now you just have to keep saying to yourself, you need the smaller one. This has an exponent of 2, this has an exponent of 1. So you can pull it out to the first. You'll also notice they have the quantity of 2x squared minus 4. So I'm going to pull that quantity out. And now i got to talk smaller. Who's smaller? Negative 4 thirds or negative 1 third? Hopefully, you know negative 4 thirds is smaller. Once you have that, we're going to open up a big bracket. And let's go back to this first term. If you pull out 3x minus 4 to the first and 2x squared minus 4 to the negative 4 thirds, what's left? Well, this is completely gone, so I'm going to x that out. And I have one of these gone. So I definitely have the quantity 3x minus 4. And then I would say I have 4x times a negative 1 third, so times negative 4 thirds x. Okay, then you have this nice plus sign. What's left in the second part? Well, you pulled out the 3x minus 4 completely, and you pulled out some of this. Now remember, just take the exponent you have, negative 1 third, and subtract what you pulled out. I pulled out a negative 4 thirds. Add those together, and you get 3 thirds, which is really just 1. So you have the quantity 2x squared minus 4 to the first times looks like 6. So if I talked way too fast, pause it, rewind it, and make sure you can pull that GCF out. So I'm just going to go through and clean some of this up. Uh, I've got my 3x minus 4 times the 2x squared minus 4 to the negative 4 thirds. I'm going to distribute this through so that actually becomes negative 4x squared plus 16 thirds x plus 12x squared minus 24. And again, you could combine your like terms in this section here, but that would be as far as we most likely need to go. If you don't pull the GCF out, you probably won't be able to match their multiple choice answer. So make sure you're pulling out the GCF. Let's try one more together. All right, quantity x squared plus 6 squared divided by the quantity x squared minus 4 cubed. So again, I, I'm really going to stress rewriting this by bringing this up and avoiding quotient rule. x squared minus 4 cubed. All right, oops, to the negative third. So you've got product rule. Go ahead, check your math, pause mine, and see if we get the same thing. So I left my first, derivative of the second, brought the negative 3 down, kept the inside to the negative 4, derivative of the inside, plus leave the second, bring the 2 down, leave the inside to the first, times the 2x. Alright, put brackets around the first up to the plus sign and the second. That's where you're looking for the GCF. What do you see in common? Hopefully, you see the quantity x squared plus 6, they both have that, and they both have the quantity x squared minus 4. Now, I'll talk exponents in a second here. Let's start with the x squared plus 6. This one has it to the second, this one has it to the first. What's the smallest you can pull out? Hopefully, you're saying to the first. Let's check the x squared minus 4s. This is to the negative fourth, this is to the negative third. The whole key is you pull out the smallest. Who's smaller, negative 3 or negative 4? Well, negative 4 is. All right, what is left? I'm taking the x squared minus 4 to the negative fourth completely, and this is not hard to figure out. Take the exponent you have, subtract what you pulled out. That leaves me x squared plus 6 to the first times negative 3, 2x times negative 6x. Then there's a plus sign. On this side, you're taking out the x squared plus 6 completely. Again, take the exponent that's up there and subtract what you pulled out. You get a 1. Does that sound familiar? To the first. 
times, let's say, 4x. Alright, so again, that was just this 2x and 2x. Keep cleaning it up. And I end up with negative 2x cubed minus 52x. Hopefully I did my math right. And to rewrite this further, I can just say this piece here can move to the bottom. So I've got x squared plus 6, uh, negative 2x cubed minus 52x, and I'm going to move this junk to the bottom. Well, hopefully that's a nice easy video for us tonight, and if I have to stress one thing, alright, that key is to always pull out the smallest exponent. Smallest exponent. And then if you're ever stuck with what's left, you take what you have minus what you pulled out. Alright, we'll see you tomorrow.